in the previous video, we have discussed the Dunning philosopher's problems. In this video, we explain uh, the problem and how to solve it using uh, semaphores. For details, you can refer to the video. Okay. Here, we discuss how to solve this problem using condition variables. Now, uh, let's have a review of condition variables. Uh, for some problems, using semaphores could be complex, but it could be relatively simple to use condition variables to solve them. A condition variable is a queue of facts or processes waiting for some sort of notifications. They are supported by POSIX and SDL. A condition variable queue can only be accessed with two methods associated with its queue. These methods are typically called wait and signal. The signal method is called notify in Java. Fast waiting for a guard, that is a condition to become true, enter the queue, and the fast could go to sleep and will be awakened by other facts. Facts that change the guard from false to true could wake up the waiting fast. It is like going to a restaurant. If the restaurant has been full, no more seats, then you have to wait in a queue. And when somebody leaves the restaurant, the condition changes and you will be awakened and uh, can get some seats. Now here's the general approach uh, of using condition variable. Uh, this is presented uh, in guard command say uh, when the guard is true then uh, the statements can be executed yeah. and the another thread could change the condition from false to true on the right side is an outline of implementation using sdl so uh, we declare a boolean variable condition and set it to false at the beginning and we declare a mutex representing mutual exclusion which acts as a lock and uh, sdl con here uh, divides uh, a condition variable con where which is a queue that threads could put themselves in while waiting okay. now to use the condition variable first, uh, the thread has to acquire the lock. And then it has to check the condition. While the condition is not true, then it execute this SDL con wait. That will put the thread into this queue, con where. And it releases the lock mutex and goes to sleep. That means it's blocked here until it is awakened. Okay. If the condition is true, then it can continue to execute the uh, uh, statements. Okay. At the end, it can release the mutex. Okay. Now, this is the thread that changes the condition. Okay. Again, first it has to acquire uh, the log mutex uh, and then set the condition to true. Okay. And after that, it execute con signal. This will wake up any thread that is waiting inside the queue, actually the, uh, the head, the first one and then we need as the mutex. Now, uh, you have to pay attention to two points. 
in using condition variables. Uh, first, to evaluate a gut safely, a threat must mutually exclude the assets of all other threats. So that's why you have to execute this command lock mutex mutex just to acquire the lock to exclude others to do so. If the threat cannot acquire the mutex, then it is blocked here. So a condition variable all, always works with a mutex uh, variable. While the threat is waiting for the gut to become true, it does not lock the mutex. Otherwise, other threats cannot change the value of the gut. Uh, so here, uh, this function con wait uh, after putting the threat into the queue, it also releases uh, the lock mutex. Basically, it, uh, something like unlock mutex uh, is executed. So uh, there's an overview of the condition variable. Now, let's see how we can implement this to solve the uh, dining philosopher's problem. Now, uh, this is the code. Okay. Again, we define left and right uh, to be i minus 1, i plus 1, eating to be 1, thinking to be 2, and quit uh, is set to false at the beginning. Okay. When this is true, the threads will quit. You may refer to the other video for more detailed explanation of uh, these quantities. And mutex is a variable, uh, it is a pointer pointing to a uh, mutex structure. And then the state 5 is an array that holds the states of the five philosophers. As they are con, uh, pick up con. So this is the cue for a philosopher thread to enter if it fails to pick up both chopsticks. So the, we have these uh, functions. Uh, thing is uh, to simulate the thinking of a philosopher. It is to simulate the eating of a philosopher. Now this is what a philosopher does. Uh, the data will pass in the name of the philosopher, that is an integer i. So this is printed out. And while that quit, uh, the philosopher just thinks. And then if it, tries to, if it feels hungry, it tr tries to uh, pick up the chopsticks, both chopsticks. And if successful, then it is. And after eating, it puts down the chopsticks. Now, here is the pick up uh, routine for a philosopher I. Okay. So we define left to be left. If it is more than zero, we increment it by five to ensure that left is within zero, one, two, three, and four. So start. Uh, it acquires the mutex lock. If the mutex is not available, then it is blocked here until uh, another thread unlocks uh, mutex. So after it has acquired mutex, you will check uh, the labels. If either labor is eating, then it has to uh, enter the pickup con queue and releases mutex and uh, waiting for somebody to awaken it. If uh, none of the labels are eating, then you can proceed. Oh, by the way, when it is awakened, the threat has to reacquire the mutex and check the conditions again. So if the conditions are not true, 
then it has to enter the queue again. Okay. So if none of the laborers are eating, then uh, the thread can set its state to eating and releases the log mutex. Okay. After it has uh, acquired the chopsticks, it can eat. Okay. And after finish eating, it put down the chopsticks. So here's the put down. So the put to put down the chopsticks first, it has to acquire the lock, okay, and it can set its state to thinking again. And now it has to wake up the snipping thread, waiting to acquire chopsticks. Here he uses uh, board corn broadcast, which means to wake up all the threads in the waiting queue, pick up the corn, okay, and we need this a lot. Okay. Now when the, the threads are awakened, then they will check the laborers again. If the adjacent laborers, one of them is eating, then they has to enter the queue again. Okay. But somebody would uh, get uh, uh, the chopsticks. So th this is the, a function print info to just to print out the information of the philosophers. Okay, we discussed this in the previous video. And uh, info is a thread that calls the print info information okay, every one second. And check out is a signal routine. So when we press uh, the interrupt signal, control C, then uh, it prints out the information and uh, if we uh, press control slash the quit signal then uh, we set quit to be true so that means all the threads will be quitting okay, as you can see here So when quit is true, uh, then uh, the philosophers are done. Now uh, here's the main. So the, these are the signal routines. So the handler is checked out. We just discussed. So it's the same for both the uh, interrupt signal and quit signal. And here we use the yip statement to distinguish the two cases. And uh, so we give the name to the philosophers. Oh, here we create a mute tag using the create mute tag, and there's a log. And error checking. And the names of the philosophers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is the info thread. Okay. Now here we omit uh, the error checking, like something like this, okay, for simplicity uh, and clarity of presentation. So we say to pick up corn, STL create corn uh, to create a uh, condition variable data structure, okay. and we create uh, five threads one for each philosopher okay, and pass in the names okay, and uh, create an info thread okay. and then uh, the parent just the main routine here will wait for all the uh, child threads the philosopher threads and the info thread okay. and at the end uh, it uh, destroys the mute tag and uh, yeah, that's the program, quite uh, straightforward and but very simple. So we can compile this. G plus plus minus O. L S D L link with the S D L library. Yeah, minus L P fret link with the P fret library. So no error. So we can execute it. So. You can see that 
the number of philosophers eating could be one or two or sometimes even zero and uh, the two philosophers who are eating are never adjacent neighbors so we don't have one and two or uh, four and three or zero and four but we got zero two one four uh, one three uh, etc. Now we can uh, interrupt to uh, retrieve the information anytime we want. Okay. So these are all random. Sometimes we have zero philosopher eating, sometimes one, sometimes two. Okay. And uh, this is quite random. Okay. And uh, to quit, okay, we just type uh, control slash. Okay, so it's kitting. So uh, yeah, that's how this works. So you can try out yourself. Thank you. Bye bye.